Welcome to The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're diving into the Next Level Racing GT Elite Light Chassis. This compact powerhouse is the younger sibling to the GT Elite and offers many of the same features in a lighter, more compact, and more budget-friendly package. The GT Elite Light Chassis lives up to its name, well, GT for its driving position, Elite for its professional grade features, and light because it's not only light on the wallet, but it's one of the lightest profile chassis on the market. Priced at $499 for the chassis alone, this gets you a sim chassis based on 40 by 80 black anodized laser etched logo profile. And this is the wheel plate edition that comes with this very robust five millimeter thick steel plate with a width of 22 and a half inches. And this thing's drilled for every bottom mount wheel that I can think of, and it even has a few extras, so you can mount some extra stuff to it. It also comes in the front or side mount edition, but that will set you back an extra $100, and honestly for me, I prefer the wheel plate edition because of its adaptability and its lower price point. Now, since this doesn't come with its own seat, you're going to have to source that independently. You have a few different options. I mean, you could do a junkyard seat or turn to any retailer like Amazon and find whatever seat you want. It'll go on this rig rather easily, or you can select from a variety of seats that Next Level Racing has available, including the ERS3 that we recently reviewed for $249, all the way up to their fixed Ferrari racing seat priced at $499. And being that we just recently reviewed the ERS3 seat, we might as well use it on this one. And with that, our total cost is $748, which I think is a pretty reasonable deal considering the amount of features it comes with. So what exactly do you get for your $750? Let's check it out. You get that robust 40 by 80 profile chassis in a fixed GT position. From there, you have an extensive range of adjustments to accommodate drivers from anywhere as short as four feet all the way up to six foot nine. The GT Elite Light comes equipped with shock absorbent, adjustable feet, and a butt kicker mount. Utilizing dual bars on sliders, it is able to accommodate most car seats. Additionally, it includes all the necessary tools for the assembly, along with a tool holder, cable management clips, and end caps for all the exposed profile tubes. With the main chassis being built of those sleek black anodized finished tubes with the laser etched logos, the wheel deck and pedal mounts are constructed from steel powder coated in black. Upon receiving the chassis, I was truly impressed with the packaging. Next Level Racing goes above and beyond using foam with molded cutouts for each and every part. This meticulous attention to detail ensured that the rig arrived without a single scratch on any piece from transport. It's definitely a good way to start things off with the assembly process. Speaking of assembly, it was surprisingly straightforward for this rig. The most challenging aspect was ensuring all of the nuts were correctly placed for later use. Anyone who's built a profile rig knows exactly what I'm talking about. They get trapped in as you box things in. The base consisted of a box of profile tubing with two uprights mounted to the outside with the wheel deck then joining those across the top. The pedal deck required a few more pieces connected to the main chassis, with a couple of steel cross members to support the pedals. This setup can be configured in two different ways to accommodate taller or shorter drivers. The seat mount consists of two additional bars crossing the top of the rear, each of which can be adjusted in distance to accommodate your bottom mount seat. After assembling everything, you have a fully built, ready to go chassis. And in total, it only took me a couple of hours to complete the assembly process. Now, when it comes to the pedal deck assembly and mounting your pedals, it's really cool. I mean, like I said, you have short and long distance, depending on driver, huge amount of range adjustment. And then you've got these laser etched markings to make sure that you have everything straight and parallel. And you can move the rake or up and down seven different positions here for the front of the pedals. So if you want them inclined, then you have the two bars and each of these has slots going all the way across and you can set them to any distance that you need so that you can just put your pedals right down on them and bolt right through them. It's that easy and it's that adjustable. 
The wheel deck offers incredible flexibility, and I don't mean flexible in terms of wobble. I mean adjustability, endless adjustability. And it all starts with these huge uprights. They're very, very tall. We've got these tick marks just like the pedal deck, letting you know that you have everything aligned properly. It even comes with a little, little level to get it perfect. But you can do anything height-wise. You could do any kind of rotation of angle with this wheel deck, and it is super strong, super robust. And as I mentioned, it's got all these holes drilled, so it's going to work with Thrustmaster, Logitech, Fanatic, Moza, Sim Magic, Sim Experience, any wheel I've ever tested is going to work on this wheel deck real well. The entire unit can move as an entire assembly front and back. So if we have to do major adjustments, we can do that by moving these posts. And for smaller front to back adjustments, the wheel deck actually does move forward and back quite a bit as well. With the ERS3 seat mounted, we then have these four cam levers that when we loosen them up, we can move the entire seat assembly front and back as needed. And then with this seat, you have the added advantage of its seat sliders. So we have so much adjustment that I am 100% confident I could make this rig work for any size driver out there. Once everything was perfectly mounted and adjusted, I completed the rig with the end caps for all the exposed tubing ends and cable management clips to neatly tuck away my wires and then put the tools in the handy tool holder. And now I was ready to hit the track. With all my equipment installed and all the adjustments made to this rig to get it ready for riding, it kind of brought up one issue that I feel I really do have to mention because this is kind of one of those differences between a tubular rig and a profile chassis. As much as I love profile chassis for their endless amount of adjustment, they're not always super cooperative. So sometimes you'll find that these little nuts that slide into the grooves don't necessarily slide all that easily, especially when they're tied to like three or four other nuts when you're talking about moving one of the uprights. And sometimes you're gonna find yourself in a little bit of a tug of war where you're kind of shimming it on one side, shimming the other side, back to the other side in order to get things to move enough for your final adjustments. And then on the wheel deck, I found it to be really heavy and a little awkward. So it took a little patience and a little extra work, but we did finally get it just perfect. And this thing is dialed in ready for me to drive. In sim racing, it really comes down to how it drives, how it performs. I mean, forget all the numbers, forget all that stuff. Let's talk about the driving experience in the next level racing GT Elite Light chassis. And, you know, it really starts with a few main things. We're going to sit in our rigs a long time, so we want a good, comfortable driving position. And we want all of our gear exactly where we want it to get us the most comfort possible. So let's break it down. Let's start off with the rig and how it performs. I'm using the R12 Moza wheel. This is a 12 Newton meter wheelbase, so it produces a good amount of power, a good amount of strength. And when driving, you know, it's funny. When you have the wheel at the exact right height, the right distance, the right angle, it really reduces the amount of friction or the amount of binding. So even as I resist 12 Newton meters, when the wheel's perfect, you just don't fight the rig as much as you do when things are a little off. So that's a huge benefit when it comes to the strength of the rig. So let's talk about the strength of the GT Elite Light chassis, starting with the wheel deck. I mean, it is strong. So when I push and pull on that thing, I mean, we're talking way beyond the strength of normal driving. I'm not seeing or feeling any movement. I'm not feeling it in the left and right direction. I'm not feeling it up, down, forward, back. I mean, I push and pull on this wheel as hard as I can. And the strength of this wheel deck is really remarkable. So it's not just the uprights and the way they're attached to the rig. It's also that five millimeter wheel deck plate. It is super strong and it's noticeable when you're driving. So again, the distance, the, the airiness, that's the other thing I like about this rig. There's not a lot of obstruction. It's real minimalistic. It's got a lot of room. It's easy to get in and out of. And even though that doesn't make a huge difference while we're racing, it does add to the overall comfort or enjoyment of being in this rig. Now I talked about the importance of the wheel deck alignment, height and angle and all of that. And that's equally as important when it comes to the pedals. Now, when we're using a heavy duty load cell, it, it, it's going to have to resist that strength no matter what. It's not just a matter of having in the right spot and the right angle, but it's resisting a huge load. And when you look at this pedal assembly and the way it resists and holds my heavy duty brake gear, you can see it's, it's really doing its job well. 
And, you know, when you think about this being a $499 chassis, that's not, you know, super cheap, but it's definitely not expensive. You can spend $1,500, $2,000 on a rig nowadays. So with it being a really uh, affordable price, you're getting the kind of strength that you really do see out of much, much higher priced rigs. For me, it was a good thing that this came with two different pedal length options because I found the original or taller driver version to actually be too stretched out. And so when I talk about how adjustable this rig is for, for different height drivers, I am five foot five and I was right on that line I felt. At this height, I could have left it in the tall driver position and I would have had things really scrunched up tight together or I could put the pedal assembly in the shorter driver position and have it working for my height and smaller. And it, it actually would go quite a bit taller. I could lengthen this out even though I've put it for the shorter drivers, but huge range of adjustment. And I was able to get my pedals really comfortable in a really good spot. They call it the GT driving position and it certainly is. I feel like that difference between my seat height and my pedal height is really good and I just have that steering wheel right where I want so I can drive with a ton of confidence and real good precision as well. Now in this case at the $499 price the GT Elite Light chassis doesn't come with a seat so I am using the ERS3 seat which I did that review. It's a very comfortable seat and I also feel like it's it's really well matched with this rig in terms of the right price point. So 748 for the combination. And, and, and again, I think it's a, a really good representation of giving you everything that you need without not one extra. Keeping that price as low as possible. Profile chassis can be so, so expensive. And a lot of them, quite honestly, might even be overbuilt because if you look at how strong this is and you think, well, do you really need any more re reinforcement? Do you really need any stronger or larger tubes? This gets it all done. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter on the wallet. And it really performs as, as well as the big boys or, or nearly as well as the big boys. I mean, I would use a much stronger wheel on this with confidence. I wouldn't even restrict myself to 12 newton meters. I think you can pretty much put any steering wheel on this. And unless you're running it at 150% force feedback challenge, and then you're going to need arms, you know, you're going to need to be a bodybuilder to run that wheel. I think the chassis would handle it just fine. So in the end, I feel like the GT Elite chassis, I mean, it looks the part, it plays the part, it drives the part, it, it checks all the boxes. What more could you really ask for? Uh, I think the only thing, I mean, I think if there was just one thing that I could actually change, maybe I would tilt the base of this seat back just a teeny tiny bit, uh, but I can adjust the seat back as far as the backrest goes and I'm comfort. I'm just talking about just maybe a teeny tiny bit more under my thigh, which would be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but I could probably just put some shims under this and take care of that in, in future adjustments. But I, I still give it a, a real top award when it comes to overall driving comfort. So I, I've been real happy with it. It's a, a, a great rig for the money. And in the areas that it's less expensive, it might be for reasons that you needed, like a rig that's a little bit easier to move around, doesn't weigh so much, or just because you don't want to break the wallet. So great job, Next Level Racing. GT Elite Lite performs like a pro rig. One aspect I haven't touched upon in our review of the GT Elite Lite chassis is the extensive amount of add-ons for this chassis. So being part of the Elite family from Next Level, you have a whole bunch of accessories and add-ons that you can put on this rig. Things like monitor mounts, shifter mounts, or even flight kit adapters for this rig. One of the other advantages of a profile chassis that I haven't covered here is the futuristic ability, is that a word, of the chassis. If I have extra hardware, I put a nut down one of these slots and I can bolt anything to this rig. So if I want a shifter arm, I could look at the add-ons from Next Level Racing or I could design my own and just bolt it to the rig. If I wanted a mouse pad, I could just bolt it to the rig. And with this wheel deck and the extra holes it has, if I wanted a display or a button box, I could just bolt it to the rig. So that is very advantageous for other things you might do in the future. So I think I've told you everything that I can about the Next Level Racing GT Elite Lite chassis. 
But to make things perfectly clear, let's break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being, it is a good price. Strong, DD ready for sure. Highly adjustable, lightweight for a profile chassis. Upgrades available, very compatible with all SIM gear. Cable management clips, easy to get in and out of, alignment marks. And now on to the not so good. And with as many adjustments as you can make, they're not necessarily easy to make. No seat angle adjustment. And now on to the bottom line. As you can see, there wasn't a lot negative to say about this rig. I think anything that it doesn't do perfectly or well, it really is based on the fact that it just is a lot less expensive than a lot of the profile chassis out there. So I'm very impressed with the rig for the money. I know $499 isn't giving them away, but it is a lot of rig for the money when you compare it to other rig options on the market. Now, another thing I think people getting into a rig for the first time really have to consider or think about is, are you looking for a tubular type chassis, like a welded frame chassis, or are you looking for a profile design? And they both have certain advantages. I'll tell you, you can build a tubular chassis a whole lot quicker than you can build this rig. You can make the adjustments to a tubular chassis a whole lot faster you can with this rig, but you're always gonna have limitations on how much you can adjust on those type of rigs versus the endless flex flexibility of a profile chassis. Now for new sim racers who are diving into this hobby and they know they're all in from the very beginning, it's a daunting task. There's a lot to pay for. You need a wheel, pedals, a rig, computer, monitors, the works. It adds up real quick and knowing where to spend your money and where to save your money is always a challenge. But if you're stepping into it and you know you're all in and you're going with a direct drive wheel, you really want to go with a rig. You don't want to be at a desktop even though it might work temporarily. This rig is a really nice compromise. It gets you the features you need as far as the strength, rigidity, and adjustability you need, but it is definitely done on sort of a minimalistic type of design, which has advantages as well. It's very easy to get in and out of this chassis. I love that about it. It is a little on the light side, although I will say that with all the components mounted, I wouldn't call it light anymore. It's a pretty bulky chassis, but it's probably half the weight of a much more substantial profile chassis. So with all of that, it really does make it a great option. And for those looking to upgrade, but they just don't want to spend over $1,000, this is gonna be a great option. And again, it gives you so many features and with the add-on availability to be able to add a shifter or a flight kit kind of makes it a little bit better than that. So I think I've told you everything that you need to know about this rig. I think that wraps up our review today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next video comes out. And thank you for watching. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.